I'm Tom Dalton. What happens if a partner contributes property to a partnership and the fair market value of the property is different than its tax basis? If the fair market value of the property is higher than its tax basis and the partner sold the property, the partner would have recognized the gain and paid taxes on it. By contributing it to the partnership instead, can the partnership allocate this contributed gain to the other partners? IRC Section 704C answers this question, and the answer is no, by the way. This video is about property contributed to a partnership with built-in gains and losses. The second 704C video will talk about expenses such as depreciation expense arising from this property. Let's jump right in. If you are familiar with the substantial economic effect rules, you know that substantial economic effect centers around a fair market value balance sheet. This is also known as the 704B balance sheet. 704C comes into play when property is contributed to a partnership and the 704B, or economic basis of the property, is different than the tax basis of the property. In this example, Partner 1 contributes $100,000 cash to the partnership. Partner 2 contributes land with a fair market value of $100,000 and a tax basis of $60,000. Each partner has a 50% share of profits and losses. The partnership immediately creates two balance sheets. The 704B balance sheet reflects the fair market value of the contributed assets. This balance sheet shows the economic claim of each partner, $100,000, on the partnership assets. The tax basis balance sheet shows the tax basis of the assets and the partner's tax basis in the partnership assets. In this example, there are no liabilities, which keeps things simple. If we were concerned with substantial economic effect, then we would only be concerned with the 704B balance sheet. But the difference between the fair market value of the land and the tax basis of the land at the time of the contribution introduces Section 704C. 704C is concerned with the difference between the two balance sheets and resolving this difference. 704C requires that any allocation of tax profit or loss should be done in a way that reduces the difference between a partner's share of tax basis in the asset and the partner's share of fair market value in the asset that exists at the time of the property contribution to the partnership. In our example, that difference is $40,000, as you can see when looking at the tax basis of the land and the fair market value of the land. Partner 2's share of this difference is reflected in Partner 2's capital account, which is equal to his tax basis in the partnership assets. In other words, the entire $40,000 of difference between the tax basis and the fair market value basis of the land is assigned to Partner 2, the contributing partner. Keeping track of two different balance sheets, tax basis and 704B, is a useful tool in applying Section 704C. Let's assume that the land is later sold for $150,000. Here is the journal entry for the 704B set of books. Under the Substantial Economic Effect Rules, each partner is allocated 50% of the economic gain. That gain is reflected in the partner's economic capital accounts. Here is the journal entry for the tax set of books. The gain is $90,000. 704C requires us to allocate the $90,000 tax gain so as to reduce the difference between the partner's tax basis and fair market value basis in the assets. The regulations let us use any reasonable method to do this. However, as you will see in a minute, the regulations offer three safe harbor methods. To accomplish our goal, it doesn't take much imagination to see that the first $40,000 of tax gain should go to Partner 2. The remaining $50,000 of tax gain should be evenly split as per the partnership agreement. And in the end, both partners' tax basis capital accounts are equal to their 704B capital accounts, 
which is the goal of Section 704C. Simple, right? What could go wrong? What if the land was only sold for $90,000? The 704B journal entry would look like this. And the 704B balance sheet would look like this. The tax basis journal entry would look like this. And the tax basis balance sheet would look like this. As you can see, both partners now have a tax basis in the assets that is different than their fair market value claim on the assets. We did not quite reach the 704C goal of making them equal. In the regulations, this is known as the traditional method of allocating tax gain under 704C, and it is perfectly fine with the Treasury if you leave it this way. But for the poor accountant who will lose sleep at night worrying about this discrepancy, the Treasury offers two other methods. The first is called the traditional method with curative allocations. The second is called the remedial method. The end effect of both of these methods or a reasonable variation of these methods, is that one or more partners will be allocated tax income and one or more partners will be allocated tax expenses. The 704B economic balance sheet does not change. These special tax allocations do not have economic effect and therefore do not affect the economic capital accounts. They are strictly tax allocations. In our example, under either of these two methods, partner one would end up with $5,000 of tax expenses. Partner two would end up with $5,000 of tax income. When all was finished, the tax capital accounts would equal the fair market value capital accounts. Although this example shows how built-in gains are treated, built-in losses follow the same approach. The built-in tax loss existing at the time of the contribution will be eventually allocated to the partner who contributed the property so as to reduce or eliminate the difference between the tax basis of the asset and the fair market value of the asset. If this asset were subject to depreciation expense, then we would have to adjust the tax depreciation expense to achieve the same end goal. I'll illustrate that process in the Part 2 video of 704C. There is one other important thing to point out about Section 704C gain. If the non-recourse debt is secured by the asset, then it is possible part of the built-in gain could be minimum gain. This is similar to the minimum gain that's important to substantial economic effect calculations, except that the 704C minimum gain is calculated using tax basis of the asset rather than the 704B fair market value basis of the asset. In this example, Partner 2 contributed land worth $160,000 along with a non-recourse mortgage of $60,000. So the net fair market value of Partner 1's contribution is $100,000, which is equal to Partner 2's $100,000 cash contribution. Both partners think it's a fair deal. But the land has a $50,000 tax basis. The total amount of built-in gain that we have to deal with under Section 704C is $110,000. This is the $160,000 fair market value less the $50,000 tax basis of the land. Within that $110,000, though, is $10,000 of minimum gain. Minimum gain, as you might recall, is the amount of the non-recourse debt less the basis of the property securing the debt. Under 704C, we use tax basis instead of fair market value basis. So, the 704C $10,000 minimum gain is $60,000 non-recourse debt minus $50,000 of tax basis in the land. I point this out because the distinction becomes very important when allocating non-recourse liabilities among the partners at the end of the year. If you watch the video describing the allocation of non-recourse liabilities, I'll refer back to this video and the 704C minimum gain.
Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to send me an email. If you like this video and would like to see more, feel free to subscribe.